Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I am Veral, and today we're kicking off a new series on low code application tools. First up, we're diving into AppSmith. In this video, I will guide you through the installation and configuration process to get you up and running quickly. So let's jump right in. So what is AppSmith? AppSmith is an open source platform that makes it super easy to build internal tools and application without needing to write a lot of code. It's perfect for anyone who wants to streamline their workflow or create custom solutions quickly. I especially like the UI for creating forms and uh, that's one of the reasons I started looking for something like this. As you guys know, I'm not a UI person, so I'm always looking for tools and application that can help me just sort of muck out my application as quickly as possible, especially the UI. All right, so let's start with the installation. First, we will head over to the AppSmith website to get installation instruction. Um, here you can see it all. You can do the OSET version of AppSmith. You know, they, you can pay for that. But what we're going to do instead is use their basically the free self-hosted version. AppSmith provides several installation methods, but we will go with Docker installation for this tutorial. It's one of the easiest way to get AppSmith up and running. Of course, you can use any of the other installation methods if you want something more production ready, but we'll stick to simple and self-hosted running locally on our machine. First, make sure you have Docker installed on your machine. If you don't, you can download it from docker.com. If you're new to Docker, check out my playlist, Understanding and Using Docker, where I cover Docker, Docker Compose in details and much, much more. Once you have Docker up and running, um, let's click on the link that says Docker for the um, type of installation we want. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see they have a um, Docker Compose um, text. We're going to click the copy button to copy that to our file. I already have a directory called AppSmith. So I'm just going to open my editor in this directory, create a file called docker-compose.yaml. I'm going to paste the contents of the Docker Compose that we copied from the AppSmith website. Notice this says that it is going to pull the AppSmith that Enterprise Edition image. Don't worry about that. It's still open source. As you can see, when we go into the configuration, it's going to remind you that oh, we are using the self-hosted version. So don't, don't worry that it says EE. Now that we have um, this space in the file, there are only two things that we need to change or you should change. Notice that by default, AppSmith um, Docker Compose file wants to map your port 80 um, on your local machine to the port 80 export by the container. And similarly, also port 443. However, those two ports are below the 1000 port number. And without going into too much detail, basically your computer is going to ask you for permission to be able to run on those lower port numbers. So I'll just say change it to a higher port number. So you can consider using like um, 1080 and 1443, or just essentially something like 2080 and 2443, you know, 3080, something along those patterns. I'm going to use 4080, well, basically 4080 and 4343. So 4443. So why am I going to do that? Well, I have a number of other Docker com um, containers running. And so that's the one I have free. So if you run this Docker command, Docker PS and minus minus format, and here I'm basically specifying the two things that I want to see. So this is allowing Docker PS to just spit out the information I want. And I want to see the container ID, a list of container IDs and their port just to see what I have running and what port they're on. So if you, like me, have a ton of Docker containers running, maybe you might want to run this command just to be sure that oh, you're not going to use a port that's already running or allocated. If you do that, Docker is going to warn you. So just change the number. So keep going with that similar pattern, like 50, 80 or something like that, and keep going. Now, if you don't need the HTTPS port, just simply don't map it. So you can just stick with port 80 alone. I'm going to be using port 80 alone in this um, tutorial series because I'm just using this on my computer. It's not exposed on the internet. If you're going to do anything like that, you should absolutely read the documentation and not do what I'm doing. Okay. All right. So once you've done editing your file, now go to the command line and in this directory where we have our Docker Compose file, let's just confirm by typing ls. 
and then we can do is say Docker space compose, and I'm going to say space pull. And I already pulled this image, so it doesn't have um, to do anything for me. But for you, depending on your internet and your computer speed, it might take a few minutes to pull the images locally into your Docker image repository. But once that's finished, then you can say Docker compose space up minus D. And so basically what we're saying is bring up our um, set of containers and minus D just means run it as a daemon or in the background. And so once we do that, you'll see it says creating the network, creating the container. And then we can say Docker comp space compose and do the log space minus F, which means show me the logs for these containers and minus F mean follow. And so if you want to see what's going on. So um, I'm going to just stop this in terms of stop tailing the logs. I don't stop the container because remember that's running in the back room, sort of. That's where we got back our prompt. So I'm going to type control C. So now I'll go over to my web browser and I'm going to try and log into the AppSmith UI. So for that, it's going to be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon the port number that you pick. So for me, this is going to be 4080, like I said, but of course you'll have to change it to match your um, installation or your setup. And so you press enter. And now you're at the welcome screen for um, AppSmith. So first thing we'll do, enter our name. So I'll put Veral Adams, for example, email Veral at example.com. That's what I'm going to use. Please, again, if you're doing this, don't do exactly what I'm doing. Okay, what is your general development proficiency? Are you brand new to development? You're a novice, intermediate, or advanced? I'll put intermediate, and <laughs> why not? What would you like to use AppSmith for? I'll say personal projects. I don't plan to use this at work. I'm literally doing this at home. I um, accept receive. I accept receiving security and product update. Since my email address is not valid, I'm not. I'm gonna uncheck this. If you're using a valid email, up to you. If you want to receive these security and product updates, click on get started. And now we're here. And if you're paying for AppSmith, you can of course add your license at this point. I'll show you another place where you can add a license later, but we're doing the free slash self host our own free plan. Um, so just click here and get it started. And then it's going to ask you if you want to connect to your data source. We're going to worry about connect data sources in a future video. So for now, just click skip this step and I'll do it later. Now you'll see that it's already created a application for us. I'll explain application and workspaces in a future video. So for now, I'm just going to click on this um, icon here that says AppSmith. And I want to give you a walkthrough of the UI. On the left-hand side, you see it says workspaces. And um, we have one workspace that's already created called Veral's app. Um, for you, it's going to call it whatever, depending on your name. You can do upgrade, but let's just click on admin setting. Now, since we're the first user, we're the admin. You can have multiple admin users. I'll show you that. And so only the admin users will have this icon. Otherwise, they will simply have their own profile, you know, setting page here to adjust their profile. And so you can click on edit profile and you can, of course, change your name, email, reset your password, change your email, and then set up your git config. I'm going to click on admin setting, and this is how you can configure AdSmith further. You can give it your instant any name you want. So I'm going to call it, you know, my, or let's just go with Ferrell's app Smith instance. I mean, you can call it anything you want. And then here's my admin email. You can add other email addresses for any other users you want to be admin. Um, anonymous data, I do not want to send any anonymous data to AppSmith right now, so I'm going to uncheck that. There's certain things you will not be able to do um, disable or configure because this is a self OSIS, a free version. So for example, removing this AppSmith watermark here, you're not going to be able to remove that. So this is always going to say build with AppSmith, and you're not going to be able to sort of make this interface, you know, the branding, your own because it's the free version. So that is something you'd need a business plan for. Um, and then you can see stuff, programmatic access control. We don't have access to that. User limit, we don't have access. 
session timeout, we can't change that unless it's the enterprise version. And Git uh, operation on this tenant should attempt to perform push automatically. You can change it if you want. And of course, link it to your Git. We'll see how you can, I'll show you where you can link your application to a Git repository so that your code is automatically saved in Git if you wanted to, to do that. And then embedded setting. This is allow embedding everywhere. Um, not a recommended as it says right there. You can read more about that in the documentation. Limit embedding to certain URL. I'm just going to disable um, embedding anywhere because I'm never going to need to use something like that. Now you can configure email so that oh, um, you know you can send emails from your absolute applications. But we're going to I'm going to leave that out for now. But of course, if you know about configuring emails um, in this sort of application. You should know what the host port, the username and address and that sort of thing are. So I'm not going to spend any time on that. Um, developer setting. Um, if you have a Google Maps API key, you can put it here so that you develop application. You can then use in, um, you know, a, an address or like a longitude and latitude. You can show a Google map of that specific location if you build out those kind of application. Authentication. So you can enable single sign-on so that oh, you can have several ways for authenticating the users for your AppSmith um, instance. So right now, this is just the form login for AppSmith and that's gonna be the users that you add to AppSmith. Otherwise, you can configure it with GitHub or Google or anything else so that um, AppSmith basically allow those users to authenticate your application. So for me, I'm just going to leave it with this. I'm not going to enable all that sort of thing. Um, advanced, you can, AppSmith stores information in MongoDB. So if you have a external MongoDB that you want to use, you can use that, or there's an internal one that's already available. Use with AppSmith. And when we talk about data sources, you'll see that how you can use the internal one. Um, but if you have an external one for your deployment or you already have one that you want to use, well, you can set it up here or you can, when you're setting up a data source, which we're going to talk about in future videos, you can use it there. Um, the Redis that Asmit is using, you can also, again, set, configure something else. And if you have a custom domain, if you're running this, let's say, you know, external domain, you can put that in there. And this comes in handy for when you're creating, you're sharing your application or the link that is created for sharing. We're going to talk about sharing application and workspaces when we cover workspaces and application. This is going to show you current version of Axmith, and you can go check out the release note. Now, like I can mention this is all section about branding, which is being able to change what Axmith look like and uploading a different logo and that sort of thing. This is all stuff you can do if you're using the business version. And I can mention. Is a place where you can put in a license key and change the plan. If you bought a license, you can add it here, say activate, and it's going to automatically update your installation to whatever um, version that is that you paid for. And then there are provisioning and access control, which we saw that all the things that is available, if you depend on which version of Axmit you're paying for, we don't have access to any of those. So there's no point in continuing. If we click here, we can go back. The only other thing to show you on this page is that you can get to the documentation from here or you can chat with AppSmith. Sometimes I notice that oh, they have a little window that pop up here saying that oh, you can chat with them. I don't really like that, but it's free. So I guess I can't be, I can't complain too much, but it's nice to know that all the documentation is nice and handy right here, just like in pocket base. So I really like that. And so if we come back here, um, of course, you always have this prominent upgrade button. So they let me know that oh, it's easy to upgrade. I mentioned that oh, you can share your workspace. So this is an example of here. We're in this workspace called Veral Apps. We can share it or we can create a new application. And of course, we will see how to share that. And there you have it. You have successfully installed and configured AppSmith. In the next video, we'll dive into building our first app using AppSmith. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you are excited to build with AppSmith. Also, don't forget to check out my playlist, Understanding and Using Docker for more details tutorial on Docker and Docker Compose. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next, in the next video.
Take care. Bye.